Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of Trading Bitcoin uh, with your host, Tone Base, coming to you live from uh, Belize, Georgia, the capital of Georgia. And um, it's pretty much exactly what you see in the thumbnail behind me. It's, um, I know, like uh, I showed on this video a few hours ago, the light would have been much, much better. Uh, I'll give you a little view of what I see here from my terrace. Um, and then we'll do the charts and I'll probably give you one more look after. So let me get my wires crossed here. Um, so this is the old city. I'm in the center of the capital. Uh, the prices for Airbnbs here are very, very cheap. And um, so as really see like the old ruins and stuff. There's a like a river uh, in between these two areas, in between the two sidewalks. There's a river going down there. And... Um, those things that you see like these half domes that's actually a um like a bath house that's a, a sulfur baths and steam rooms and stuff uh, we were uh, at the one around the corner last time it's uh but but these are the really old ones uh so really really cool stuff uh really nice buildings you can see right there on the side there and uh, they're still building stuff around Try and bring you a different look from a different area tomorrow. I'm here one more night. This is my second to last night um, in Georgia. I extended my trip, skipping Ukraine and uh, having a lot of fun. But today is a work day, so I'll be working all day. All right. Uh, let's go to the charts. Where am I here? All right, here it is. Um, let's go to the charts and then I'll uh, do a few announcements later, I guess. And uh, also uh, give you one more look later on. How are we doing on live views? It's a weird time, a very few, only about 150 right now. That's cool. Yeah, I'm a uh, downtown Belize. City is great. It's probably one of the safest countries in the world, other than, you know, their little problem with Russia. Uh, but as far as like the people are concerned, ah, it's great. Okay. Let's go to the higher level charts. Oh, Leah Lee, Lee pointed something out the other day, and maybe I'll start with that. Otherwise, I will forget. So this is the monthly chart. The monthly chart is not looking very good. It's set to Heikinashi, and we are now working on the second red month in a row. Now, current month still has a lot of time, a lot of time. And uh, we're going back under this trend line. I always felt that we rebounded too early, guys. It always bothered me, and it continues to bother me to this day. Um, I want to pull up the hyperwave chart. How is that? All right, fine, got it. Great, thank you. Um, load chart layout. Okay. Maybe I just need to refresh. Let's go to load chart layout and look at hyperwave. Look at the Bitcoin hyperwave. It is on our weekly scale. So so I had drawn my hyperwave lines a little bit, perhaps a little bit differently than Tyler did. But the chart that Leah sent me, let me actually grab that. It might be might make more sense. Here it is. Let me do this. So this was Tyler Jenks' original phase two line. My phase two line is a little bit um, lower, actually. 
And because I, I, I drew mine a little bit differently. There is some, I mean, there shouldn't be some subjectivity, but I was playing around with them. But this was Tyler's original phase two. And this was his phase three. And that was phase four, which is, uh, uh, my mind is most likely not the correct way to draw it. But I just, uh, I like to have multiple scenarios. So this is the original phase two from Tyler Jenks. And when we fell below phase two, he fully expected it to go to phase one. Now, remember, phase one was at 1,500. We fell to 3,000. You may think that he is wrong by a lot, but he's actually wrong by very, very little. Because the difference, because uh, Tyler called the top just under 20,000. He called it at around 19. He called it way at the top. Did a better job than me, that's for sure. Uh, though I didn't do a bad job. I called... Um, I called the bear market two weeks into January. He did it in December. Okay. So calling the top at 19,000 and saying 1,000, but only reaching 3,000 in hindsight is pretty damn good. Okay. We fell below phase two and we fell uh, pretty much 50%, almost 50% below phase two. Now we needed to fall a little bit further. We needed to fall down to 1K to complete this. Then we went back up, but we couldn't get to new all-time high. Because you can't get to new, because you didn't get to new all-time high, the hyperwave is still calling for one thousand dollars. That has not changed. That only changes with a new all-time high. We didn't get to new all-time high. So hyperwave still says there's a higher than 50% chance. You're going to get to phase one and uh, we're back at phase two. The last time phase two was much lower. It was sitting at 5,500 or so. Now phase two is at 8,000. We've already broken it, but have not yet closed below it on a weekly basis. So we will see how the rest of this week goes and next week and the week after that. Okay. Um, I kind of like this trend line going through this point instead, personally. So if I, this is why I kind of drew it that way. So this would be um, on my charts. Uh, you know, it looks more like this on my charts. And, but on my charts, this is more like phase three. And this becomes a bit of a phase four, which I can probably, no, I can't slide it over that way. Yeah, there's not much I can do here. Um, yeah, I see the phase four has to be like this. Not much else you can do other than this for phase four. Just extend it down, I guess, but can't really do much about phase four. So what Tyler had was he had phase three between this low and this low going into phase four. That makes his phase two, uh, something like this i lowered my face to thought that we can get to it and bounce off of it because tyler's face two was actually broken mid this candle so there's multiple ways to draw it but the concept is the same if i connect this low to this low and go through this very critical point we are now below this trend line We've been there before, right here, but we went back over the following week. If we get a full candle opening and closing below this line, that could be problematic. Okay, let's go to my charts. We remain below the moving average. This is the 30 week moving average, which remains critical. You can also see how we're anticipating a death cross in three weeks, assuming the price doesn't change. The price, of course, always changes. So we may or may not get this uh, cross. Right now, this is a bullish week in a bear market based on a weekly trend. We have the sequential which is telling us to be bearish and in a short trade. 
we have the stop and reverse points, which are telling us to be bearish and in a short trade. We have fallen below a Fibonacci level, though not a critical one. I'd rather um, see us go here. Um, and that is the 38% Fibonacci on the... Oh, I drew this Fibonacci kind of backwards, I believe. Uh, but that's okay. There are pretty, they're pretty symmetric. Okay. So that is the 38% pullback. Um, actually, no, I draw it correct. That's the 38% pullback. And this would be the 61% pullback. I'm looking to see if there's anything else here of interest and not really. The daily chart is interesting. The daily chart is more interesting now that it just updated. The daily chart is really, really neutral right now. Here is what's bullish about the daily chart. You had a nice rise of the $7,700 low. For me personally, it would have been hard to time. It was only a six sequential, fully below the moving average. The only reason for me to go long here on a daily scale is just the fact that we've fallen too much but there's really nothing else there. This is a reversal candle and a pretty nasty one that got rejected by the 200 day moving average, simple version. The current candle has fallen below that reversal candle, which normally activates a short trade based on trading with candlesticks. I can see it right there, pierced it. Based on sequential, you don't really have a reason to short yet. You're still on a green three, but you are being rejected by the 200-day moving average, which continues to rise, indicating that you're in a bull market. The short-term moving average or the medium-term moving average of 50 days, uh, sorry, that's the purple one, has rounded and is starting to decline ever so slightly. The... Sorry, that's the 128 day moving average. The orange is the, is the 50 day and that one is fully declining. Uh, you also have monster resistance as the underside of the triangle. This picture is leaning more bearish than bullish. Can this be the bottom and we go to all time highs? Sure. Could there be fundamentals to drive us to new all time highs? Sure, you know, Bitcoin is still solid, but here's what I'm hearing again. I believe Bitcoin is very solid from a fundamental perspective. Uh, but here's what I'm hearing right now. And we're going to explore this in detail, maybe not in detail, but I'll probably have a panel on it at Unconfiscatable and we will definitely cover it at Understanding Bitcoin. But here's what I'm hearing. Bitcoin is going to die next week because of quantum computers. Bitcoin needs to immediately hard fork to prevent quantum computers from destroying Bitcoin. So I, I will promise you that before the next halving, some asshole is going to think that he knows best and he's going to try to hard fork Bitcoin to be quantum proof. And he's going to try to get everyone on board. Okay. The amount of people that think they know better and want to control the Bitcoin uh, blockchain has no limits. Okay. This is what they're going to do. I have to get Willie back on a show. I know I've been, I've been busy traveling. It's, it's hard. It's hard to do this stuff when you're not at home. He is confident in his on-chain volume as he should be. Just like I am confident that the current price picture of Bitcoin is very bearish. One of us is going to be wrong. I'd rather it be me. Because at least if I'm wrong, I have a Bitcoin hodl position.
Oh, that's true. I maybe I'm, I was using log charts. I wonder if this is a log chart. It's not. It should be a linear. It is a linear chart. It's not a log chart. It's all equidistant. October 5th. Oh, boy. I got to find time to write an article. No idea when I'm going to do that, though. I got to go to Prague on Friday for a conference. What's going to happen October 5th? I don't know. Uh, and we're getting closer and closer to it, right? So what do I think can happen October 5th? Well, October 5th, I believe, will either be a big drop or, well, I, I no longer think October 5th is going to be the, the low. Uh, if, if this year, if, we, if two days ago, we would have kept falling towards low sevens or into the sixes, I would have anticipated October 5th to be the time of the rebound. But because we're rebounding now, and today is already October 2nd, I don't believe we're going to drop fast and hard enough to create a low on October 5th. That could have happened you know, three days ago if we would have dropped hard from 77. But I'm not anticipating a huge crash here. So uh, now I'm anticipating the market to start you know, a big wave down. And when I say wave down, I don't literally mean Elliott wave. Uh, to start a drop down around October 5th. So I believe this rebound that we're currently dealing with can last for three more days. Maybe it can go higher. Or maybe it's just going to consolidate around 8,000 for three or four more days. And then the drop begins October 5th. So I am still looking at October 5th for something, or it could be a fundamental event. You know, maybe that's when something happens. Maybe that's when Satoshi moves his coins. I have no idea what's going to happen that day. Okay. Um, I'm going to be at a conference all day. I'm going to be in, uh, it will be Saturday in Prague. I'll be at a conference all day. I'll try to remember to pay attention, but I'll be looking for October 5th to be something useful. And if it's not, then, well, then the date doesn't really matter. Um, also keep in mind that October 5th is nowhere near as critical as August 11, 2017 was. The dates, and to learn more, go to Tonevay's blog and just scroll a couple of... Tonevay's blog and scroll a couple of uh, articles down and you'll see Bitcoin time analysis and the significance of August 11th. Now, August 11th was a very major event. October 5th is a minor event. There's a big difference here, right? So I have in a single year, in a, this was the last cycle, right? And now we're coming into the next cycle. So in the current cycle, it's the same thing. We have a minor event, then a significant event, then a minor event, and then a major event, okay? The October 5th date is a minor event. Uh, you have to, we're going to have to wait like six more years for another major event. So they come around every 8.6 years. So it's a minor event. It may be nothing, okay? It might be nothing. This daily chart is a bit of a mixed signal, but it's leaning bearish to me. Um, leaning bearish. I want to... Uh, okay, so this isn't working either. Let me refresh this. Reload site. Um, well, I guess I have to reload it, don't I? Okay. Oh, Bitmax funding rate's pretty negative. So that favors the bulls. Look at that. That favors the bulls. Keep that in mind too. That favors the bulls. So we can rebound here for, you know, a few more days into October 5th. Wouldn't be surprised. Would not be surprised. And uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, I was going to look at Lucid SARs.
<laughs> Lucifer, nice. I think it's this one. Yeah, 1,800 likes. It's got to be that one. I also want to start. How do I start? I want to put it in favorites. I don't want to put it twice. Why can't I put it in my favorites? I can't favorite this indicator. Yeah, I guess I can set it to favorites. I don't know why, but oh well. And uh, you can see we got plenty of room before the SAR tells you to go short. Now, the SAR is actually not that bad here, right? So you'd go long here at 10,005. You would have to get out and go short somewhere here at 11,000. I'm sure this would have went up fairly quickly at 11,000 somewhere. That's a profitable trade. That's when you go short. And then you stay with this short until you go long somewhere here at 10,500, another profitable trade, no, slightly profitable. And then you go short here for a losing trade around 10,000, but that, but you're still holding that short. So that was very profitable. All right, that's the parabolic SARs. This would have been bad. Long here, short there. Um, yeah, I guess this is more of a weekly kind of thing. See, to me, they don't react fast enough. I would use other metrics. All right, let me close this. I'm going to go through this a little bit faster. We're back on this line. I would actually, like, we pierced this line a little bit. I would adjust this line. I would say this line did its job. I would, you know, we went over it by the smallest of percentage points. And this is a 12-hour chart. And a 12-hour chart is starting to look bearish. Remember, in two hours from now, this becomes a red one if current prices hold. So it's about to flip over based on sequential. Let me look at your question, Seth. Bitcoin dominance is at 68%, not 90, but major alts are back to pre-2017 lows relative to Bitcoin. Would you consider your prerequisite to start a new bull market uh, fulfilled? Uh, I'm leaning yes, but it doesn't feel like it. And here we are on a four hour chart and look how uh, a moving average is rejecting this. What moving average is that? That's the 50 period moving average. Look at this monster rejection with the 50 period moving average. Also look at the high coming in on, on a nine, uh, you know, yesterday. And you see these red arrows and I would simply extend this line. Below this line, once again, is trouble. In fact, below this cross might be trouble, though it is a bullish cross. Let's see what happens when the four hour gets to a nine. Let's see if we can rebound off a higher low. The markets are kind of neutral right now, but if we go below 8,000 again, I'm expecting a big drop down. Hash rate, still doing well. Total market cap, Bitcoin dominance. Bitcoin dominance is at 69. That was the Bitcoin dominance question. I, I, I don't think so. I mean, the, the major shit coins are still, people still believe in them. Wow, what happened to Ethereum the last 24 hours? What the hell is that? Look, people still believe in Ethereum. People now believe in EOS because the stupid SEC slapped them, didn't even slap them on the wrist, 
They kind of SEC did this. They like waved their finger, and then they walked away. They fined them twenty four million dollars, which is like in between the cushions of a couch at EOS headquarters. And um, yeah, it was bad. It was bad. Go go start your scam, everyone. Go start your scam. Go start an ERC twenty. Go start. Go create an unlicensed unregistered security. The SEC ain't doing shit. They're not doing shit. Even if you're an American citizen, go do it. Go break the law. Go break financial laws. The SEC isn't doing shit to you. Have fun. Litecoin is consolidating at the bottom against Bitcoin. Um, I think when Litecoin dies because of no mining, people will finally understand that all proof of work coins are garbage other than Bitcoin. And when Ethereum eventually implodes, people will understand that all uh, smart contract layers are garbage compared to Bitcoin. If you feel that the market is manipulated, go be a bus driver. Like, why are you here? If it bothers you that the markets are manipulated, stop trading. Stop complaining and stop trading. I'm tired of dealing with market manipulation questions. Go start an exchange. Go create a country. Go start an exchange. You know, go talk to Liberland. Maybe Liberland will have uh, manipulation-free stock exchange for the whole world you know like what do you want to do about it go be a regulator if it bothers you that the markets are manipulated go work at the sec go work at the cftc go solve the problem start an exchange and don't allow people with a lot of money to buy Bitcoin. Like, 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 what do you want to do about it? I'm so tired of these manipulation questions, like uh, complaints. I'm sorry. Like, no one complains. Uh, no guy seems to complain about the diamond prices being manipulated when, uh, when they have to buy a ring. That's manipulation. I'm going to talk about why shit coins will die. That's my talk in Prague. I won't have any time to hang out in Bali. I'm literally going to Bali for the, for the event. For the, so I'm not, I'm not going to be able to leave the resort. Uh, the problem is that the day before Bali, I'm speaking in London. And the day after Bali, I'm speaking in Singapore. So um, I think next year, I'm actually going to stop speaking at events because uh, it's, it's hard to like enjoy life. Like I, I'm going to be in Bali for an entire week and I will have zero time to leave the, my own conference basically in Bali. Uh, so I, won't, I will not see any part of Bali other than uh, the airport and the hotel where we're doing understanding Bitcoin. So starting next year, uh, I'm going to implement a high speaking fee and I'm probably going to speak, instead of speaking at 30 conferences in a year, I'll speak at like maybe five. Uh, so I'm probably going to cut back greatly on speaking next year. Uh, the event location in Bali is not public to prevent people that live in Bali from just showing up. It's a high net worth event, uh, high level event. So it's not public where we're going to be. We'll get to the stock market. I'm just going through my charts. Looks like Bcash is ready to go to zero. Excellent. Still keeping an eye on I want to set that exactly at 2019. Still keeping an eye on my claim that Binance should be less than uh, zero here uh, by percentage versus Bitcoin by year end. We'll see. 
gold uh, was looking very bearish the other day, a little better now, but in a bearish posture, I would not be buying gold right now. That weekly chart is not looking good. The daily chart probably looks good. The daily chart is not looking good either. It looks like a bounce into a death cross. Uh, broke setup trend. That's not good. Uh, below the moving averages, that's not good. I would stay away from gold. I would certainly stay away from silver, even though silver bounced off the setup trend line and did not actually break it. Oil, and there goes oil. Oil fully closed the gap. It is a nine buy, so it looks like a bounce. I am bearish oil. I feel that oil is overvalued by a lot. I think the world is removing itself from oil with renewable energy. Might take another decade or two or three or four, but that's where the world's headed. We can also talk all day about real estate prices. I think real estate prices all over the world are actually a little overvalued. What people don't realize is, other than India and Africa, and maybe, maybe Indonesia and the Philippines, world population is declining. Declining, okay? Now, the rising population in Africa and India may you know, have the whole world have a rising population. But other than those countries, population is declining. In about 20 to 30 years from now, maybe 50 years from now, I, I think that every, everywhere on the planet, including India and Africa, population is going to be declining. All this nonsense about how there's not enough land and how there'll be 100 trillion people and we're all gonna starve are ridiculous, completely ridiculous. So what you want to think about before buying up a shit ton of land, what happens in one to 200 years from now when the world is underpopulated uh, and no one needs your real estate anymore? So I'm not that high on real estate for the long term. I'm just not. Bitcoin, I think, is a much better bet. Also, um, with better uh, technology and better internet connectivity, people don't have to live in crowded cities. Like you don't have to live in, well, Hong Kong is in serious trouble at the moment from what it looks like on the news or on Twitter, I should probably say. Like you don't have to like live in Singapore. Like you don't have to live in New York City. You don't have to live in London. What, what, once the number one employer the transportation industry gets completely uh, distributed with technology. I don't want to say decentralized, but once a truck driver and a taxi driver is no longer needed and you have self-driving cars, there's almost no reason to live in a major city. Like the population of major cities, I expect to drop heavily because most jobs could be done remotely. The problem is going to be finding good employees because people don't seem to work very well uh, when they're not in an office with, you know, a boss standing over them and yelling at them. No, I think self-driving cars will make Lyft and Uber uh, be the Amazon and the Google of today. Uh, There is more than enough land on this planet. Um, of course, humans will always want land. You want to own as much land as possible. I mean, uh, again, I'm here in, the, in Georgia, and Russia wants Georgian land. So they're, you know, taking over parts of it. Oh, I need to plug in my computer. Of course, humans will always want land. Uh, but you can own it. I'm just saying real estate is not that expensive. You... Uh, what makes, uh, and your land isn't really your land. Your land is yours until a guy with a bigger gun takes your land from you. So land is very confiscatable. So 
So where were we here? Oh, I was talking about Lyft and Uber. Lyft and Uber are going to be the biggest companies providing you with self-driving cars because you're not going to get into a decentralized car. You're just not. It's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous concept that you will put your life in the hands of the Ethereum developers. Like it's not going to happen. You, there's going to be a company that is responsible for your life in a car. And that company will probably be Uber. Or it's equivalent. Oh, okay, so by explode, you mean the, the value of those companies go up? Yeah, I meant explode like Ethereum is going to explode. So we're going to, uh, I miss, uh, misinterpreted your word explode. All right, so the S&P is actually dropping hard. Last time I did this video, we had a nice green one here above this reversal candle, and I was bullish. But this line is here for a reason, guys. And going below this line and having a full candle below it is very problematic. You also have this line. Going below this line is even more problematic. If S&P drops below this red line tomorrow and closes there, that's a problem. So while yesterday I would have been very happy to own, to own stocks and looking for long trades, today I am looking for short trades. Or by yesterday afternoon, I would have been looking for short trades. I am not bullish the S&P 500 right now on a short-term basis at all. I think we can pull back and this could create a very dangerous, I think a serious correction in the S&P 500 can happen. Now, this is very, very different from what I said yesterday, but the price of the S&P 500 was very, very different yesterday than it is today. So your analysis is only as good as the last time you looked at a chart. And I did not even know it dropped this hard until just now. So right now, ox, but I don't know if I'm, you know, I, I don't have anything prepared. Well, yeah, Mar Marcus is saying, yesterday you told the world S&P is going to 4,000. Well, yeah, well, that was yesterday, right? Is today yesterday? And the answer is no. Today, this is why yesterday is called yesterday and today is called today. Yesterday, I thought the S&P was going to 4,000, and today, I don't. Like, this is why I do daily videos. You can also, my opinion yesterday was different than my opinion today. Like, if you, if, if you look behind me, you see clear skies. My opinion is that it's not going to rain today. If I wake up tomorrow morning and I see, and, I, and my opinion is it's not going to rain tomorrow either. But if I wake up tomorrow morning and I see a bunch of clouds, my opinion is going to be, well, yesterday I didn't think it was going to rain today, but today I think it's going to rain today. That's what trading is. Welcome to life. Audio tweak. Let's see what this link is. Debunking the myth of overpopulation. Beautiful. Like, guys, stop listening to, like, stop listening to globalists that want to kill you. Just stop. All these vegans and uh, global warmists and uh, overpopulation insanity, 
all these people want to do, they just want to control your life so that like they want you to die basically as soon as possible so that they can have, you know, more real estate. Maybe, I don't know why the hell they want to do that. World population to 2,300. Excellent. Boom. Even Africa is set to, um, wait, what do we got here? Hold on. According to this, published a while ago, actually. Um, well, anyway, you got to read the article, I guess. It's so obvious why overpopulation is not a problem. It's, it's, like, it's like obvious. You just got to stop listening to bullshit. Again, overpopulation in a small, in, in a single region, yes, but overpopulation on the planet? I hate pop-ups so much. All right. See, this is the problem with dark backgrounds. I'm, a, I'm outdoors and I can't see shit right now on this chart. What stock is this? Oh, this is MoneyGram. Yeah, I think MoneyGram is going to go bankrupt. And I really hope it takes Ripple down with it. I actually got to go check into a different Airbnb. I have another one with a different uh, scenery. I'm reading your comments. I can look at GM. I haven't looked at GM in a while. Oh, wow. I didn't know it was a $30 stock again. They're doing well. I'm not going anywhere the last, well, year or so. Hey, GM don't look too bad. GM don't look half bad. Bad candle, though. Break setup trend. I'm bearish here. Wow, look at that nine. Nice top on a nine right there. Uh, bad candle yesterday. And uh, I'm kind of bearish now. I take that back. It's looking good over the last... I, I was surprised it was a $36 stock. I thought it was like four down in the $10 area. But um, yeah, it looks like it's going to go down. This is the break of setup trend. It broke setup trend last time, but rallied. I don't think it's going to happen again. I, I think this thing is going to go down. But everything should be going down. Look at Starbucks. Starbucks is still going down. Um, I think Starbucks could be a nice pickup right here at $80 range. That's a nice 20% correction if it holds setup trend. But you got to watch the overall stock market. How's Tesla doing? Yeah, see, Tesla is holding right there. Nice. I'm actually bullish Tesla. I would buy a Tesla if I actually had a place to live and a charging station. I would totally buy a Tesla. I don't want to go through the stocks. I think I'm going to call this for almost a day, pretty much. Hey, guys, check out the financial summit. Uh, we got a few more spots left to sell, and then we're going to slap a sold out logo on it. And I may bring you another one of these in six months in the Caribbean because the demand is looking really, really good. And uh, check that out. Unconfiscatable, hopefully, will go on sale next week. Uh, we're uh, I still got to reach out to a bunch of speakers, see who I can get to speak. Tone, what's the best country to live in? I don't have the best country to live in. See, here's the problem. It's like the market. If I name a, the best country to live in right now, tomorrow, it may be the worst country to live in, right? Um, 
I remember I read an article where Doug Casey told people to buy real estate in Zimbabwe back in the 80s. And then what happened in the late 80s, early 90s, right? So it, I like it here in Georgia. You know, if uh, I really do, I like Ukraine. I like Thailand. I like uh, Istanbul. I like uh, Brisbane, Australia. There's like a dozen cities that I like. I will, I should make a list, tone, vase, top 10 cities, but it doesn't mean that you want to live there. You got to look at where are you from, right? Like it's irrelevant where I live. Uh, well, let me not talk about why, uh, but if you live in a certain country, it might be better for you to live in one place. If you live in a different country, it might be better to, for you to live somewhere else. Hey, over on tonevase.com, if you head over to on-demand videos, uh, probably by end of week, we will have, we'll be selling Tyler Jenks' Hyperwave vi uh, videos uh, through this portal as well. So I still have my workshops. There's one coming up in uh, Bucharest. Also my public calendar, you can see where I'm speaking. And I really think I need to cut back on where I'm on, on how often I speak. It's just too much. It's just too much. And um, here it is. I'll be going over to Prague next, then uh, Bucharest and Cluj, Romania, then the UK. Uh, I'll be in London, then Bali, then Singapore. Anyway, then Greece, then Portugal, and then uh, at the moment, that's it. I, I know they have me listed as a speaker in Russia. I'm not speaking there, like in two weeks. They also have me listed in uh, Malta. It's not on my calendar. So if it's not on my calendar, it means I personally have not confirmed it. I may be speaking there. I may not be speaking there. But if you don't see it on my calendar, do not assume I speak there. If you see it on my calendar, then assume that I'm speaking there. I don't think I will be in Norway anytime soon. I'm not looking at shit coins, guys. All right, uh, that's pretty much it. If you want to support, check out the affiliate page. Um, and if you want to buy a t-shirt like the one I'm wearing now from Understanding Bitcoin Conference, uh, check out the store. There it is. All right, guys, um, that's it for me. And I will talk to you all on the next one. Oh, wait, let me show you Belize. Yeah. I'm literally in the center of town and this Airbnb was 45 bucks. There's a river going through there at the bottom, very ancient city. And uh, here's my Airbnb. Well, it's just that floor actually. I don't know who's staying above me. And then you, know, you can see like other buildings nearby. It's really cool. Can't really get you much closer. Maybe I can. There you go. And right across the street from me are sulfur, um, hot pools and baths and saunas. I already went to one of those the other day. May or may not go tomorrow, we'll see. All right, guys, now I'm done. Talk to you all on the next one.